way that Democrats use women and uh, sexual assaults to get a delay, that is a total turnoff. No one has ever been treated like they treated him, and it was just hard to watch. We loved Kavanaugh. We believed what he was saying. I hate to say it, I didn't believe her. The lady seemed as if she was being used by the politicians, and I think the Democrats, it will be their downfall. Well, that sounds awfully different from the narrative Democrats wanted us to believe, and that's not all. Thanks to a strong economy, labor force participation among prime-age U.S. women aged 25 to 54 has actually risen to 75.2 percent from 73.3 percent three years ago. And unemployment among that group, well, the lowest level since the 1950s. Uh, between the backlash uh, to Kavanaugh and the great economic fortunes, should Democrats be taking the female vote for granted? Joining us now to react, Harmeet Dillon, an attorney and RNC chairwoman from California, and Sarah Badawi, a Democratic strategist and senior lobbyist for Progressive Change uh, Campaign Change Committee. Um, Sarah, I want to start with you on this. Look at these numbers. I mean, just economic numbers for women. Uh, more women in the labor force, really, since the 1990s. Record number of people uh, earning a, a good living. Wages beginning to go up. You look at the chart there. Since uh, 2000, of course, at the height of the tech boom and so forth. These are just staggeringly good economic numbers for women. Sure. So those economic numbers are good. But having a job and being a part of the labor force is the bare minimum for women. When suburban women go home and talk to their families, they're thinking about health care. And when Mitch McConnell is on television promising to vote to repeal the ACA again, taking health care coverage away from millions of Americans, that matters. And when he promises to cut Social Security benefits for millions of seniors, when did he do that matters. Just the other day, he was saying to make up for the deficit, we're going to need to cut Social Security benefits. And I think How, how does the Progressive women... Change Committee, uh, Committee for Change, uh, advocate for reforming Social Security? How do you guys think we should? Well, I think Democrats up and down the ticket all across the country are fighting tooth and nail in stark contrast to not only protect Social Security, but to expand But you know benefits. it's unsustainable. I mean, you're, you probably know math probably better than I do. I'm not very good at math, but you know, the numbers obviously are not sustainable. We've got to make changes to Social Security at some point. I mean, nobody wants to do Actually, it. Actually, I think but it's, it's perfectly a... sustainable because what really? you do is you just raise the cap on the income tax so people can see the solvency of the Social Security Fund for generations to come. But regardless, I think what we're seeing is a stark right. contrast between what one party is offering and the other right. party. Right. Well, you guys, you guys I mean, the, the left army cares about really a couple issues. I mean, health care, definitely, they're, they're pushing the health care issue. But, I mean, I pay for my own health care. Right. It's gone up, I think, 60 percent yep. since Obamacare. Yep. And that was during the, you pay for your own, yeah, as small well as small business owner. I pay for all the people so, who like, work for me. Like, I, I had expensive health care before Obamacare, yeah. but it's like through it's, the roof. It's I mean, more than double. Oh, no, my God. Yeah, it's like absolutely. a joke. It's yeah. a complete joke. That's right. But that was after Obama. Right. So with that, I mean, it, it, what is it with the suburban female voter, though? Is it uncomfortable with the tonality of some of what they're hearing, the Trump administration? Because the economic news is great, and some of these other issues... I mean, I, they don't seem like they're bubbling up to the surface as they would normally, like in a presidential election. Well, I just heard Democrats want to raise taxes. Raising taxes is always the solution to every problem. But I think women are more complex than that. And I think that for each of these women who likes to have a job, some of them also like to have the choice of working at home and being moms. And that's a perfectly legitimate choice. And they want their husbands and they want their families and they want their kids to have futures that are bright and have a lot of opportunity. So, uh, you know, these numbers are coupled with amazing opportunity for Americans and you know we saw the lead-in with the story about how women kind of reacted negatively to the sort of uh, caricature of them as only caring about one side of an issue you know we care about all sides of the issues we own businesses we provide for our employees we don't like paying taxes and we like to have a bright future so I think that uh, Democrats are taking us for granted as sort of a cookie cutter approach and I think that uh one of the interesting things I think that you saw when Raymond was doing interviewing all these people, and I guess it's a self-selecting group of people that go to a Trump rally, but I've noticed this with, with folks who are not all that political. The ability to separate some of the tweets they might not like from the president and the way America is, outside of the bubble of the metropolitan areas where everyone's like tacking each other in restaurants, most people are just like going home living their lives. And they have more money in their pocket. They're able to go on a vacation. And they feel more optimistic about the future. That's not a Fox News poll, though they're great polls. These are polls that are Pew, Gallup. People are more confident about the future, women and men. And 
can't say it's nothing to do with Trump. I mean, it's <laughs> something to do with Trump. I mean, he is the guy who's been in charge, and if it were going badly, I think Democrats that, would be saying, oh, it's horrible, and Trump's the reason, right? That may be true for some women, but I think the electorate of women engaging with this midterm election is going to be completely different than what we saw in 2016, especially in the suburbs. They're more diverse than ever. They're younger than ever. And what I do think they want? People are, well, Tell me what they want that they're not getting in the greatest economy that I've ever experienced in my lifetime. I'm a lot older than you. Well, I think some people just look at the landscape of politics and they're appalled by what they're seeing and some are going to vote that moral conscience. specifically are they uh, appalled by? Well, I think seeing uh, the majority party try to strip health care for millions of people to try to cut earned benefits for seniors, not doing anything yeah, about the rising cool. cost of drug prices. But I think yeah. something that's well, really important They're doing more here, for drug prices than Obama ever did. I mean, so first we of all, the politics yeah. out of it. I'm not a big... Uh, we have seen the way suburban women are turning out in record numbers in special elections. Suburban women carried Texas, Doug Texas Jones... Texas won the two uh, uh, Democrat uh, districts in their special elections. Well, Doug Jones, historically from a red state, Got carried up by suburban women. I'm, I'm happy to see Democrats yeah. pick up seats. Doug Jones is going to lose the next election. But Same thing okay. with Connor Lamb in Pennsylvania. Yeah. We also saw Ralph Northam. All of these people in historically red and purple okay. places being carried into office by energized suburban women voters. Yeah. You know what women don't like? They don't like to hear things like Kristen Cinema say that uh, women who stay at home are, are, you know, bloodthirsty leeches. And so, you know, we don't like caricatures, and that's what the Democrats are painting us as. And so we well, are I'm not a Democrat, single, and I don't agree we, with that well, either. Well, you just said that we're all single issue voters. Which we aren't, and in fact, no, we have a lot of I complex said, it's basket of retirement things. Retirement security, it's healthcare, it's many different okay. issues um, that come at it no, from that's a variety not what of generations. Said. You actually assume that because this political system is going on, that everyone's going to vote a single way, and they aren't. And we're seeing that. And the women I know, the women who work in the professional world, and the women who own businesses, and the women who I want futures for their kids, they are looking at the whole panoply, and they're saying, "I like having more money in my pocket. I like having choices in my health care, and I like my women. government not going bankrupt because of." Dumb social security policies that or are tax unsustainable. Cuts. Uh, guys, it's such a great. Can I, can, I, can I say guys? Is that even allowed? I never know what to say. I'm anymore. okay with it. I'm Ladies, can I, what do you say? People, existence, People, whatever. Persons. Great to have you both on. Thanks so much. And